These films were the first of their kind in Australia. They broke the mould and broke community standards and set a new bar for what people could view in a cinema here in Australia. George and Karis, they did everything that's happening now 50 years ago. There's something really special here that was created and had been largely forgotten. George was a passionate artist and I was more or less his co-worker. George says, art is my life. And I say, my life is an art. And that's as far as I go. Australians are quite well known for their ostentation and vulgarity with their cars. Do you think you've just taken this to its ultimate point? Oh, yes, I, I really adore vulgarity. I, I think it should be encouraged. I first met George in Almunieca in southern Spain, 1963. He was sitting with some French people. One of them was a blind man. And he said to George, you've just seen something that you want, go for it. And it was me. He was extraordinarily handsome and good. He was guileless. Strange to say so, but it's important. He was full of love. He said, if you're going home, I'm coming with you. So then we decided to go by motorcycle because it was the easiest way to go. Went quickly through Europe, then Bulgaria, Turkey, Syria. That's on our way to Australia, but it's in Turkey. This was my most comforting portrait because I saw George on the road to infinity. George was a painter when I first met him, but after our journey, he started getting interested in photography and the creative urge, it was just something he had to do. They're not outsider artists, they're operated within an art system, but they transverse so many different aspects of society, from high culture to low culture, and especially here in King's Cross, they're a massive part of that story. The cross was very much alive in those times. George financed his photo equipment, developing porn movies in the dark room. So being exposed to so much so-called pornography, we thought we'd have a go at ourselves just for the heck of it. It was called The Dream, and it was highly popular in the clientele. There'd be country blokes, I think, mainly watching it. And those films were always pinched by the vice squad. So it regularly got pinched and regularly got developed again. I don't know what the vice squad did with it. We got bitten by the movie bug. In About Love, there are various aspects of love involved in the five segments. Honey. I have a migraine. We funded it all ourselves, and that gained us an experimental film fund grant, so we kept going. It suited George and I very much to work together in movie. He was a powerful director, and I had organisational skills from nursing, so I could easily do pre-production and so on. You are about to see a very useful film on sex aids. Yes, well, I think I should mention that sex aids and how to use them. It was the first Australian pornographic movie passed by the censor. And we had a whale of a time making it. Hello, Australia. <laughs> I'm your host, S. Felicity Cher. Just appearing together with our everyday couple, Winton and Astrid, to bring you a special treat. Two people of two different sexes trying to make it together in a creative kind of way. 
these films were what were known in the US as a white coater, where you would get someone presenting in a white coat, posing as a doctor, to try and promote the perception that these films were educational. The clitoris, what stops him from finding it? Is it hard to find? We used our upstairs flat as a studio. No furniture. They just performed on the floor and they were having a good time. And we made it all in one night session, which is pretty good going. And it was the biggest grossing short film in the history of Australian cinema to that date. So people really enjoyed it. It's completely free. It's a totally liberated approach that I think even today would probably make people blush. Living in Europe, people talk normally about sex every day. It's just not the shy or embarrassment attitude that we had here in some circles. The scene is set for you. The bed is made and waiting. The time is ripe for you to start creative mating. Following on the success of Sex Aids, we presented, well, my dear, within the same sort of vein, but we chose a white horse to talk and tell the story about marriage. I can't talk. I've had a vasectomy. I'm a gelding. George brought with him from Europe a European art sensibility, and that is prevalent throughout all of his films. There's artistic flourishes, and you can definitely see that they're going for something a bit different to what we now perceive as pornography. But unfortunately, we went a bit far, and it was not given a certificate. This scene speaks for itself. We had all sorts of wonderful film ideas, but we just couldn't attract finance. So I think that's when George really turned to photography in an exclusive way because it was something he could afford and loved doing. His early photo montage work was all hand done. He would sit here at this table and peel the emulsion off the photograph and paste it on. He loved doing it. All the films, they were just shoved up in the roof space by yours truly and left there without any climate control. And they were there for year upon year upon year. Then Leon turned up and saved them. Some of these films were in such bad state that when they arrived at the lab, they had to move all the other materials out because the vinegar syndrome and the fumes were so bad. If I'd have left them any longer, they would have been completely decayed and completely unusable, and these films would have been lost forever. I'm quite happy in a way. I think George lives through them as well, because they're his work. I don't know how I survive running a relationship in a metaphysical sense. I miss him desperately, the flesh and blood George. But he's here. It's the work that he wants to be seen. She always will be beautiful, no question. How can you picture how she was before, how she is now? She is my wife. I'm still in love with that girl and I can't help it.